Hello there, you already know the crop effect, transform, masks. Yeah, we really have to stop using these in the old boring ways. Because otherwise, what's the point of them? Good thing I found 5 creative ways to use them. Let's open up DaVinci Re... Premiere Pro. Tool number one. We all know the good old transform effect. Well, you can actually do some awesome stuff with it. For example, creating this awesome transition. First you need a logo. Obviously for me, let's use the Premiere logo. Drag it on a video track above the videos you want to use for the transition. You can already trim the logo to make it fit the length of the transition. Next, find the transform effect in the effect browser and drag it to your clip. Head over to the effect controls and before we touch the transform effect, scale and position your logo to fill up the entire screen. Now make sure the playhead is on the first frame. Then go to transform effect. Move the logo out of the frame by using the position and perhaps the rotation property. Now move the playhead to the end of the clip and move the position all the way out of the frame but this time on the other side. Feel free to adjust the rotation again as well. Select the first two keyframes, right click, time interpolation and make sure to set it to ease out. Then select the last two keyframes and set them to ease in. That will smoothen the animation. Lastly, set the shutter angle to 180 degrees for a natural motion blur and there you go. Tool number two, creating a logo that floats out of this magical box. The first thing you want to do is add a logo on top of your chest video. Then find the transform effect and drag it to your logo. All right, now with your clip selected, go to the effect controls and create a simple animation of the logo going up. At the beginning, make sure it's completely in front of the chest. Now, just like you learned before, ease the first keyframe out and the last one in. And don't forget to give it some motion blur, of course. Now, go back to the timeline and right click your logo. Then choose Nest. Call it Icon or something. Then click on OK. We're doing this because otherwise the next effect is not going to work. Next, find the basic 3D effect and drag it to the nested sequence. You can basically do whatever you want with this. You can animate both the swivel or tilt properties or just one of them. I added a slight animation to both of them to give it that subtle 3D feeling but nothing too crazy. Alright next step set the blending mode to linear dodge or add. That way the logo blends in beautifully. Now it's time to make it look like it's coming out of the chest. To do that hold down alt and duplicate the clip of your chest on top of the logo animation. Then trim it down so it only covers the part where the logo is supposed to be inside the chest. Then select the clip and head over to the effect controls. Make sure the playhead is on the first frame of the clip. Find opacity and click the pen tool to create a mask. Now in the program monitor draw a mask around the edge of the front of the chest and once that's done go back to the effect controls and add a mask pad keyframe. Now move forward in time and adjust the mask until it fits around the edge again. Keep doing that until you're at the end of the video. Play around with the mask feather and if needed you can tweak the mask with the expansion property. There you go. That looks awesome. Now if you want you can adjust the hue of your logo to fit your video or you can actually do the same thing to your clip to fit your logo. Whatever you want. I like the blue one. Tool number three. This one is a bit unexpected but it's one of the most useful tools I've added to my editing setup. This tool is called GoLogin and no it's not an editing app but it solves so many headaches we deal with when working online. Let me show you. GoLogin lets you create totally separate browser profiles each with its own fingerprint, location and cookies. That means that I can log into different client YouTube channels, social platforms or cloud drives all from the same device. This comes with zero risk or cross account issues bans or tracking. It also helps me access editing resources that aren't available in my country. Think of motion packs, AI tools, stock music sites, stuff like that. These sites are geo-restricted and I just switch the location and go login and boom, I'm browsing like I'm in the US or in the UK. When you're in video editor this happens frequently. And if you're a part of a team, say you're handing off uploads, doing thumbnail A-B testing or managing social posting, you can securely share browser profiles with your team and you don't have to share your password. Honestly, I wanted to show you guys this because this is one of these behind the scenes tools that keeps my company running well and most importantly, safe. There's a link down below for you guys in the description which means you can get 2 gigabytes of free proxy traffic which is more than enough to try it out for free. Thanks GoLogin so much for sponsoring this video. But now it's time to move on to tool number 4. Using Photoshop Extend to extend your videos. This one is very useful. I use it all the time when I'm making short form content because my videos are actually filmed horizontally. Let me show you how to do it. So first I scale and position my video until I'm into frame exactly how I want 
want it. The black bars are gonna be filled up by Photoshop. All right, click the screenshot button and make sure the file type is set to TIFF. That one is lossless and will make sure your quality stays perfect. Now open up Photoshop and simply drag your clip in the program. That will automatically create a project with the correct resolution. Now in the toolbar, select the rectangular marquee tool and select your video, but leave a small edge at the top and the bottom. Then hit Ctrl plus Shift plus I to invert the entire selection. Now go to generate a fill, no need to type in anything, and then click generate. You'll always get three versions, so make sure to pick the best one. Next, make sure only the AI generated part of the image is visible. Now go to the export window and make sure to save it as a PNG. Then bring it back to Premiere and lay the PNG on top of your video. There you go, no one will notice. You can always select them both and nest them by the way. That way you can easily scale and reposition the video however you want. Number five using copy pasta. It's a free plugin that will help you copy and paste snapshots into the timeline for both Premiere and After Effects. To learn more about that and five other free plugins that I'm using every day, click the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching.